Very good evening everyone, welcome to 7th Big League, the edition for the first and second semi-finals. And first to the MCG, and the clash there between Fitzroy and Essendon in the first semi-final, surprisingly, was only the third occasion that these two sides had met in a VFL final. The record stands 2-1 in the Lions' favour, of course successful in 79 and 81 in the elimination finals, and they've built on that record this year with dual success over the Dons in rounds 3 and 14. It's only been seven days, of course, since Fitzroy graced the MCG turf in a final, and for the Bombers, the wait has been just a little bit longer. They last played there in September in the grand final of 1968 when they were defeated by Carlton by only three points. In action on that occasion for the Red and Blacks were the likes of Epus, Fletcher and Davis. And today it was the Watsons, Van der Haas and Maddens on whom they were pinning success. Our replay begins at the 16-minute mark of the first quarter and their commentators at the MCG are Bob Skilton and Sandy Roberts. His kick towards centre half forward and a mark taken there by Simon Madden. Well judged mark by Madden. Madden, the loose man further up the ground and Danaher too tall again for Graham Hinchin. I'd be making the change right now if I was Robert Walls. I think if he kicks this it won't be very long before that change is made. Graham Hinchin giving away a foot in height. I don't know what it, me what it measures in centimetres, Sandy. Uh, I'm afraid I'm no mathematician at that either, but here's his kick. It looks good. It is. Two goals, Terry Danaher. Essendon, 3-1-19. Fitzroy, 1-3-9. Ten points to margin. And uh, I have been informed by a statistician that it's 31 centimetres. 31 centimetres. Or is that millimetres? <laughs> well, there's still no change. No runner coming out onto the ground, so Graham Hinchin. And Essendon very wisely leaving Danaher a la Peter Hudson style right down there on his own. Back to the centre bounce after some 17 minutes. Essendon lead by 10 points. Rendell and Madden. Carlson it comes to. His kick is partly smothered. Side bottom trying to trap the ball. Andrew's going over the top and I think he's given away the free kick. They have to go back over the mark. Kevin Smith just explained to Ronnie Andrews why he gave the free kick. Quinlan suggesting he goes short, and uh, that was the target. Rendell in perhaps a little too aggressively on that occasion. And the free kick will go the way of Darren Williams. One of several players who's forced his way into this Essendon side in the latter stages of the season. The others being Ezard and Bradbury. A good smother by oh, on Merritt's handball, but he recovers to tap it forward to Hawker. He gets it on to Andrews. Ronnie won't get away. It's hell. Pushes the ball along in front, then cleverly tried to soccer it forward for his teammate, but Thornton intercepts. Goes back towards centre wing. Good use of the body and in a good back. mark taken by Hurd. But yes, he says in the back, and so it will go the way of Gary Wilson. So Wilson now from centre wing, member side of the ground, side bottom. Not in position where I feel he should be. And Quinlan calls play on the umpire. Harris diving. Taken by Bradbury. The former Port Melbourne star. Puts it out wide. Andrews misses the sitter. Picked up by Wilson. Good play, Gary Wilson. As he gets a hand pass across to Francis. Hooks the ball oh. forward. Down he goes. Upfield it is. And, uh, well, look, it's a free kick. Oh. Short pass from Conlon, and Harris takes the mark. Bruising for a bruising, wasn't it? If you give the free kick, you go a bit further, I feel. Yes, I thought so, but nevertheless, the action is with Leon Harris, Bobby, and he's... Uh, Essendon are preparing to make an interchange, too, as we watch this shot from Harris. Good-looking drop punt, swinging back. He's got it. And Fitzroy come back. They are 2-3, trailing Essendon 3-1 on Seven's Big League and warming up on the sideline for Essendon is Frank Donnell. I do gain the impression, Sandy, that Ronnie Andrews has said that uh, the best way of playing side bottom is letting him know you're around. Well, I think he's made the point relatively clear now. In fact, uh, they're making a change. The Bombers will keep an eye on this. Centre bounce. 
No one wins it decisively. Clayton got a hurried kick, but only gathered a couple of metres. Neagle's on the end of a handball from Folds, goes the other way, swings round onto the right foot, puts it high towards the half-forward line. Merritt is there, attempted to tap it forward, which was clever. Bahaja pushed it forward, but then lost it. Leon Harris, Good play. great soccer tactics by Harris. Here's another one down the ground to them. It'll be Paul Roos. Another free kick downfield. Yep. And Andrews is being taken from the ground and being replaced by Donnell and Van der Haar, it looks as though, has gone down into defence. In fact, he has on the side. Hand pass from Wilson to Carlson, back to Wilson, back to Carlson, a chance of a score as Lee Carlson goes towards goal. It's a beautiful kick. Lee Carlson bringing up full points. Great goal by Lee Carlson, and there's the board. 3-1-19 to 3-3-21. So Holden Commodore. Out here beyond civilization, it survives easily. It was designed and built to, so that in the city it would be almost indestructible. But we did more than simply engineer Commodore to outlast other cars. We gave it generous family space with seats carefully designed for relaxed long distance touring, body and suspension computer tuned for quiet travel. For the driver, Commodore offers unique standards of drivability and handling plus a host of equipment choices. Two six-cylinder engines, two V8s, power steering, central locking, cruise control, trip computer, and much more. Before you choose your next new car, look into Commodore. It has everything you need. Go shopping with cash in your pocket. Come to Custom Credit before you buy and organize a Custom Credit cash in advance loan. Mike took cash with him when he bought his car. Got a nice cash discount too. Jane and Bob bought a runabout from an ad in the classifieds. They did a lot better with cash. And Dave did a cash deal on a new videotape recorder. You can get cash in advance from Custom Credit for just about anything. Call Custom Credit before you buy. They're good sports with money. Sunday Press tomorrow is a 10th birthday bumper issue. Celebrate with the press. There'll be lots of competitions and prizes, including a great family trip flying TAA to Wanderers Paradise, the gateway to the Barrier Reef. The press sports coverage will be better than ever with complete reports and statistics on the football finals. Neil Roberts looks at Collingwood and where they're headed. And Jacko looks at the backroom boys, the JRs of football. Sunday Press, out tomorrow. You could win the spectacular Porsche 928S or one of 10 Pan American holidays by entering the Shell Lucky Lubricants draw. With any Shell oil change or Shell oil purchase, you could take off with one of these great prizes. Enter now at your participating Shell service station, but hurry. Tomorrow afternoon at 2.15, Seven Sport presents the live telecast of the Army Reserve Cup second semi-final. Will it be victory for the Lean and Hungry Lions or the Fast and Furious Magpies? The Army Reserve Cup final series, exclusively yours through Seven Sport. And late in the first quarter, it's Fitzroy leading by a point. Rendell got the tap. Taken there by Merritt. Hooked towards goal. Up towards the goal square it comes. Pert coming back at a good mark taken by Carlson. Plays on with a hand pass to Parrish. He's clear. One way, then the what? other. Puts himself in all sorts of bother. Poor play by Les Parrish. The kick by Madden offline over the boundary line. Parrish trying to do too much on that occasion. Interchange is about to be made with... Laurie coming off the ground, Coleman on for Fitzroy, but at the present moment we're in the back pocket and Gary Pert to put the ball back into play. Merritt up high, couldn't take the mark. Bahaja puts the ball on, Kink gains possession, loses it. Wilson lost possession also, Heard coming through, tackled, gets the hand pass to Bahaja. Bahaja able to straighten up, dummies, oh beautiful play, Bahaja, what a great goal, Tony Bahaja. Tremendous goal from one of the smallest players on the ground, the budgie has seen Essendon shoot to 4-2, 26, leading Fitzroy, 3-3, 21 on Seven's big league. Wonderful play as we watch on the Seven big league, the replay of that shot, Tony Bahaja, dummies, traps of the ball, straightens up and puts it through the centre. Wonderful football by Tony Bahaja. Centre bounce once again, almost into time on in this first term. Rendell and Madden. 
won by the latter and taken by Fitzroy and pushed down towards Conlon who gets a shocking bounce out it comes to Quinlan pushes the ball along in front of him Weston who doesn't have great pace is going with him Neagle has been quiet almost ran out of bounds but uh, gives it straight to side bottom who steadies and will pound a punt in towards full forward and a good mark good strong mark taken by Roos only 25 metres out Connell in the hands of the trainers behind players. Ruse goes forward. Poor kick by Paul Ruse. Only one point. There it is. 4-2-26 Essendon to 3-4-22 Fitzroy. It's Paul Weston now with the ball. Favouring the outer side of the ground. Using the drop punt. Rain coming down here at the MCG. There's a ball taken by Watson. He's, his hand pass comes out to Williams. The kick towards half forward. No mark. Kink, good play by Kink, read that beautifully, hooks it back, he was looking for Hawker, kicked off the ground by Hawker, Danaher the player with it, Hinch in a good tackle, the hand pass comes to Pert of Fitzroy, he puts it back towards the half-back line, and a good mark taken there by Folds of Essendon, Gary Folds, towards centre half forward, Dunnell the player, couldn't take it on the second grab, he's still playing, taps it forward, Ezard, Bahaja gets the ball out now to Nagel, Nagel hooks the ball high in the air down towards the forward area. Oh, no mark taken. Kink, it'll wobble towards the goal, but it's offline. Great effort by Kink on that occasion, but unfortunately just offline and uh, one point to Rene Kink. But a good piece of play nonetheless. Essendon 4 3. Lead Fitzroy 3 4 on the seven scoreboard. Pert again. Tumbling a punt straight down the middle. Rendell caught. Almost dropped it. Folds. Clayton scouting. Williams tried to get a hurried kick in, but it was unsuccessful. And the umpire will come in and have a bounce. Umpire Smith and Saws. Hurt now on Danaher. Hinchin has been shifted away. There's the bounce. Merritt doing the ruck work. Wasn't successful on that occasion as Nettlefold got a hurried kick over the middle. Conlon. Oh, he can have a run here. Watson won't catch him. Nor will Carey, I don't think. Watson to the half, uh, Conlon to the half forward line. Heard tapping it straight back towards Conlon. Good work by Van der Haar defensively tapping it over the line. A very even first term after a bruising start. Bruce, but no, the whistle had sounded and the free kick this time will go the way of Simon Madden. Low trajectory drop punt and Michael Nettlefold appreciate. Plays straight on, giving the handball away. Parrish across that half forward line, but Neagle is uh, too good for Francis at the moment. He also enjoys a run, lopes away, looks towards Donnell again, tackles solidly. Through comes Thornton, tumbling a punt to half forward. Van der Haar pushes the ball down in front. Clever too, because it gives the running players an opportunity. To the half forward line, Merritt. Great support from Ezard. Gotch taken out of it. Ezard shoots towards goal and puts it through. First goal to this young player and Essendon's fifth. 5 3 to 3 4 on seventh big lead. champion of an offer. We'll give your money back if you believe there's a better colour TV picture. See him try, see him go, see him best of all at Bank Arena, our favourite colour TV. Could a bank manager possibly live, eat and sleep banking? Oh. Jeff White of the Commonwealth does. Right oh. now he's concentrating on low interest personal loans. He's giving a yeah. $2,000 loan for a personal computer. Yes. A $6,000 loan for home improvements. 8000 for a new car? 
Yes. Oh, thank you, darling. Huh? The Commonwealth Bank personal loans. Making money come to terms with people. Cadbury Crunch is 10% bigger. Cadbury Crunch is 10% bigger. Hey, Cadbury Crunch is 10% bigger. You don't say. Cadbury Crunchy, 10% bigger, same price. On Monday night, an old matinee idol of Quincy's is murdered, and the hunt for the killer is on. A witness swears a photograph in the paper identifies the killer, but the defence protests her senility. Quincy, Monday at 7.30 on 7. And welcome back to Seven's Big League as we go back now to the MCG and Essendon in the lead by 11 points as we rejoin the game in the second quarter, some 17 minutes in. With the drop punt, Randall. Too far out to score, Quinlan. No, McMahon could be the target and a beautifully delivered ball too. Well, after missing the last one, David McMahon has a chance of making amends. Andy? Well, normally he's very accurate in front of goal. Let's see what he does in this 18th minute of play. The drop punt on its way, and he guides it beautifully. Straight over the top of the goal umpire's head, and Fitzroy come back now to within five points of the Bombers on seven's big lead. Related Fitzroy supporters. Big crowd here at the MCG is on replay. We see the ball put forward by Rendell and a nice mark taken by David McMahon over the top of Darren Williams. Centre bounce once again. Rendell and Madden. They're starting to win the ball out of the centre. Clayton to the half forward line. Carey was held, but he has the strength to draw away. Does so well. Up to the half forward line. Here comes Danaher. Straight on to Neagle, who enjoys a run, but he'll get caught. Just gets the kick in time, but the pressure has forced him to push the ball deep into the pocket, and it will be Coleman who will see it over the line. For a throw in in Essendon's right forward pocket. Rendell and Madden again. They'll be spending the day with one another. Bahaja dropped it. Kink tackles illegally. And Parrish to receive the free kick. Very shrewd play by Liz Parrish. Yes, it was. He goes short to Wilson. Transfers play towards the centre. Roos is well spoiled. Getting a favourable bounce then was Hinchin. Gives it across to his teammate. And forward go Fitzroy. Now, Quinlan's come out on a long lead. Pushes the ball in towards full forward. One grab by McMahon. Not enough. Heard. In trouble. Bradbury goes in to help. And Could easily have been a free kick to yes. McMahon. Won't be though. We'll see about it. Bounce will take place 20 metres out from the Fitzroy goal. Five points the margin between the sides. 20 minutes into the second turn. From the bounce, side bottom, gets a tap, straight to the opposition, Duckworth comes out with it, gets a hand pass to Bradbury, Bradbury's kick up towards the centre wing, leading in the race for the ball is Francis, he gets a good bounce, runs away around Madden, goes for the short pass where Wilson has given the lead, Wilson a hand pass to Rendell, puts Rendell under a bit of pressure but gets a hand pass now to Nettlefold, chance of a score as Nettlefold goes goal, but he's offline and only one point to result. So some opportunities going begging on both sides, 5-8 to 6-6 six, six with four-point margin, favouring the Bombers. Very even contest, Danny. Yes, it is. At the 21-minute mark of the second term, Shane Hurt bounces his way out of fullback, puts out a short one to Weston, picks it up on the half volley, then goes towards the wing. Merritt was held. Clayton lending support. A solidly built Clayton. The pass is good to Vanderhaar. Thought about the handball to Clayton going past again, but will now put it deep in towards goal. Kink has made his way back there. It is pushed away from him. Bahaja, Kink, Kink, a shot, but it's smothered. And Hinchin says, I'll just poke it over the line for another behind. So the margin is now five. I must admit, Sandy, Kink does look dangerous down there. No word he does when he gets away. But uh, Les Parrish is not giving him a lot of latitude at the moment. As we see Carlson. 
up towards the wing. Coleman, the target. No, he's got the free kick. I don't, I don't think Glenn, Glenn is quite as badly hurt no, as he's made it look. No, he's uh, seen some other performances and trying to emulate them possibly. But who knows? This is going to be somewhat dazed as Roos looking for Quinlan through his hands. At the back is Carey. Conlon there also for Fitzroy. Desperate stuff. Weston. Well done to get out of trouble. He's got 15 metres to boot, so he'll be able to push this ball back towards the wing. Quinlan well, doesn't look too good down there, Sandy. The kick from Paul Weston. In fact, going towards the centre. Wilson. Tackled by Kink. Not before he gets it to Carlson. There's danger as Richard Osborne picks it up. Goes in towards the pocket. Side bottom is there. Andrews is there, but so too is McMahon. And it is he who was playing in front of the pack who took the mark. Now he has yet another chance of putting Fitzroy back in front. His contribution is one goal one to date. And this term, when Essendon have threatened to break away, Fitzroy have just persisted. They've stuck to their guns strongly. He guides it. He guides it beautifully. And the Roys have hit the front. 6-8 to 6-7 on Seven's big lead. Yes, David McMahon. The veteran of 214 league games, Sandy. So he's been around for quite a while. And you watch now the experience of David McMahon. Osmond on replay, putting the ball forward. A well-judged mark by David McMahon, eventually finishing up with his second goal. Centre bounce once again, and it will be King who gets a bad bounce. He's got support through Hawker. They've been able to answer the challenge, Essendon, in the past. What will they do this time? Towards Danaher, but he's beaten for it by Hinchin. Hinchin back on Danaher, Sandy. Yes, an interesting move. Who knows, whether it was nerves in that first term, perhaps he settled down. Let's hope so. The centre wing, waiting at the front of the pack is Carlson. Will be solidly met. Is so, but keeps his eye on the football, goes after it again and comes out with it. Pushes well it over the shoulder to Roos, clever football, and Fitzroy starting to run now, up to the half-forward line, Conlon the fly. Quick handball away to Rendell. They're starting to look good, Fitzroy, in towards the pocket, side bottom and Andrews, they lock arms, side bottom. Side bottom, free kick, free kick, Sandy. He was renowned for those one-handed grabs, but they locked arms and side bottom will take the free kick and hobble back and the dejected Ronnie Andrews can do nothing of it. Side bottom has not goal to date. Fitzroy lead by one point. Pushed him right round. Drop punt on its way. One point. So Fitzroy now lead by two points. 45 plays 43 in the time on. Carey this time brings the ball back into play. Bradbury. Well, was up against two opponents then and did it beautifully to Bahaja who puts it out wider. Big Madden loping around that outer wing. Can steady. Floated up to Kink. Possibly within scoring distance. Use a drop punt. He's got onto it all right. It's a beautiful looking kick by Rene Kink, but just off target and another behind. So he's kicked one goal three of the day so far. So he like little like Terry Danner. Huh? Didn't have the kicking boot on. Here's danger. Here's real danger. Bahaja says thank you. Shoots in towards goal and puts it through. And again, good work by King. Two goals to Bahaja and Essendon regain the lead. 7-8 to 6-9 on Seven's big lead. I see of National's home video systems. The more I see you, the more I realize why I like them. They've got more pro features, more cameras than anyone, a portable that's more portable. 
I tell you, National builds home video systems like professionals want. And TV sets good enough to go with them. They're big entertainers. From National. Roll them up, roll them up. Hey, how come you only use me for withdrawals? What about all those other things, like depositing, paying off your bank card, transferring money from one account to another, or finding out your balance? I could do all that in seconds. Seven days a week. When you get to know your handy bank, banking becomes so much faster and easier. And at Westpac, we're rolling our sleeves up to make it easier still. There are so many things you can do. Hey, aren't you going to introduce me? When you get to know your handy bank. Real men always keep their cool. And real men always enjoy cheesels because real cheese eaters eat cheesels. Ah! Monday on the new Price is Right. Come on, give them a big welcome. Warwick, our carryover champ for the second night. Will Warwick win a showcase including this magnificent watch? The bedroom setting? The camera outfit? The car? The new Price is Right. Monday, 6 o'clock. And we rejoin the match now at the 21 minute mark of the third quarter and this time it's the Lions and they're leading by 13 points. So Perth will be the player to bring the ball back into play. Gets a lead from Hinchin. Hinchin takes the mark. Drives it up towards centre wing. Ruse getting away from Duckworth takes the mark. So Paul Ruse on centre wing. The hand pass to Nettlefold. Time to have one bounce. Steadies. Puts a long kick up towards the square. It's side bottom he's looking for. Off the hands of the pack and Wilson put it through off the ground. Gary Wilson kicks his first goal. And Fitzroy, 10-12, 72, Essendon, 7-11, 53. A beautiful kick by Michael Nettlefold who came streaming down the ground. And with a long, penetrating kick towards Gary's side bottom. Over his head and the pack, but Scout number 29 comes in the picture now and a little chip he makes no mistake send a bounce the bombers in real strike down goes Hawker and another bounce almost 22 minutes played the bombers trailing by 19 points they desperately want to score. Williams tries to get out of the pack with strength. Loses it. So too does Ruse. Now the handball comes the way of King. He's been quiet this term. Long up towards Madden. Can't complete the mark. The big fella's got support through Watson. He needs more, possibly. Ball held up. And we'll see another bounce. Got it down to within 25 metres of goal. Clayton and Watson both on camera at the moment. And uh, Clayton has done a great job there against Watson. Well, he's done a great job tagging for a number of weeks now the minder from the bounce Wendell gets a tap picked up now by Hinchin Hinchin's kick unfortunately for him goes straight to the opposition in Merv Neagle so it's Neagle the half forward line puts the ball high hoping for Danaher or Madden the ball comes to ground picked up there by Ezard Ezard's kick down towards the pocket Danaher coming out, couldn't get on the second grab, and it's taken through there by Gary Pert for one point to Essendon. No, 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 Bobby, it's going to be a free kick. That behind will not be recorded. Free kick going back to Fitzroy. Ross Thornton will take it in the back pocket. Merritt. Great fly, the quick handball on to Watson. In trouble, out of trouble. A short pass towards the half-forward region, Danaher. Has kicked three goals and with this set shot from 40 metres out directly in front must have a great chance of scoring and they certainly want a couple of goals to get back into this game. The drop punt from Terry Danaher. It looks good. It is good. He's kicked his fourth and Essendon's eighth. So the scoreboard sees Fitzroy 10-12 leading the Bombers 8-11 on Seven's big lead. Well, that goal most certainly will give Essendon a boost with a great mark by Merritt. A quick hand pass to Watson. Watson, very calm and cool, had a look, saw the lead from Danaher, and a fine pass. Back in the middle. Almost in the time on. Side bottom. Looked for the free kick. Did not come his way, but they forced it down to the half forward line. Roos. Loses out to the hard yard. Williams in a spot of bother. 
Rendell standing his ground. He'll take the kick from the centre. Players running everywhere down in that Fitzroy forward line. At the back is Conlon. Roos was the one that flew. Pushed in the back. And Mickey Conlon. They really do give away some strange free kicks. There's 15 going down. There's, and the 15 metres, not because of anything was done to Mickey Conlon, but because of what was done to Gary Sidewell. Billy Duckworth decided he should rest for a while and lie down. So Conlon. Chance again to give Fitzroy a good break, but this time he's off target. Well off target, in fact, out of bounds on the pull after the goal and down to our confirmed. So Western of Essendon. Beautiful kick from Weston. Almost reaching the centre. Waiting at the back on that occasion was never fold, and he got such a shock, I feel. Took it between his legs. He didn't expect the ball to come over the top of the pack. But it's a bounce. Midway between centre of the ground and centre wing. Merritt gets the, the big punch. First on the scene is Clayton of Fitzroy. Overrun. Kicked off the ground by Williams of Essendon. Francis of Fitzroy. Poor kick from Francis. Nagel traps the ball well. Comes back onto the left foot. And the free kick has been found against McMahon and will go to Bradbury of Essendon. He plays on. The left foot kick towards centre half forward. Donnell up high with the big punch. But the free kick has been found. It goes to Fitzroy's Rendell. So Matt Rendell. So a fine quarter of football. He looks there for Carlson. Can Carlson get there? No. Carey traps the ball beautifully. Has one bounce. Puts it wide. Coleman of Fitzroy, almost a mark. The short kick bounces just before the boundary line, so we'll find a throw to take place on the Essendon half forward line. 27 minutes are about to tick around in the third term, and we find the scoreboard saying 72 points Fitzroy, 59 Essendon. So it's 13 points to margin. Madden. Got the ball down. Thornton trying to get clear of the pack. Cannot do so, so a bounce will take place. And the goal would be just what the doctor ordered for the Bombers at this stage of proceedings. A couple of minutes left in the term. Rendell. A hurry kick was by Hinchin. Taken by Folds. A high kick swinging back in towards goal. Danaher gets back there now. The bounce. Madden suckers it through. That's the one they wanted. They're back in business. Holden Commodore. Out here beyond civilization, it survives easily. It was designed and built to, so that in the city it would be almost indestructible. But we did more than simply engineer Commodore to outlast other cars. We gave it generous family space with seats carefully designed for relaxed long distance touring, body and suspension computer tuned for quiet travel. For the driver, Commodore offers unique standards of drivability and handling plus a host of equipment choices. Two six-cylinder engines, two V8s, power steering, central locking, cruise control, trip computer, and much more. Before you choose your next new car, look into Commodore. It has everything you need. Sunday Press tomorrow is a 10th birthday bumper issue. Celebrate with the press. There'll be lots of competitions and prizes, including a great family trip flying TAA to Wanderers Paradise, the gateway to the Barrier Reef. The press sports coverage will be better than ever with complete reports and statistics on the football finals. Neil Roberts looks at Collingwood and where they're headed. And Jacko looks at the backroom boys, the JRs of football. Sunday Press, out tomorrow. This year, Westpac will help more than 200,000 Australians buy their own homes. At Westpac, we're rolling our sleeves up. It's time for the guys to step aside and make way for the women of rock. Joan Jett and Melissa Manchester. Kim Wilde, The Motels and Bow Wow Wow. Banana Rama. 
Blondie and Tony Basil. Kate Bush and Frida. Lena Lovitch and the Waitresses. 20 of the hottest ladies in music together on one album. Women of Rock. Get it now from KTEL. Sunday on the wonderful world of Disney, the fascinating story of Walt Disney's Silly Symphony, including his Academy Award winning masterpieces. Animated classics filled with music, wonderful stories, comedy and adventure. The story of the Silly Symphony, this Sunday at 6.30. So at three quarter time, anybody's match at the MCG, the Lions leading by the narrow margin of seven points. Who is it going to be to advance to the preliminary final? Let's go back now to Sandy and Bob. It's the final term into action, and here we go. Merritt in ruck for the Bombers, up against Matt Rendell, who has improved as the game has progressed. But it's won by Merritt. Donnell taps it further forward. Thornton tries to burst his way through. A handball into the centre is tapped forward by Rendell. This is better. Parrish in trouble. Back to the fast-moving Rendell, who kicks long towards full forward. This could be danger for Essendon. Thump out of bounds. A mighty thump by Paul Weston, who's done a superb job in defence there today and we'll see a throw in in Fitzroy's right forward pocket. Only some 30 minutes left for one of these sides for 83. Bahaja free kicked and called to play on. Towards centre wing he goes. Ezard is there, unable to complete the mark. Carlson has been busy all day. Donnell Shepherds for folds. He throws the ball out in front of him and loses it, holding the ball. So it will be Lee Carlson centre wing torpedo punt kick to the half forward region Quinlan taken out of it from the side no one able to pick it up and umpire Rowan Soares will have a bounce on that half forward line for Fitzroy from the bounce Quinlan beaten for it by Merritt Carey the favourite dives in there He's tackled by Ruse a good piece of tackling there the loose ball kicked off the ground by Parrish Weston traps it. Merritt gets a left foot kick out towards the boundary line. Runs over the line before Conlon can get there. Conlon and Folds of Essendon. So we're throwing on the half forward flank for Fitzroy. Merritt, side bottom. Side bottom, try to get over the back. Duckworth gets a hand pass to Bahaja. Bahaja lost possession, gains it again. Harris taps the ball forward. Wilson dives in there with Merritt and the umpire Rowan Sawers decides it's time for a bounce. Still on the half forward line for Fitzroy. tapped on. Desperate play by both sides as we find Duckworth and Wilson heard all diving in there and so a bounce still virtually on the half forward line for Fitzroy. Ruse doing the ruck work for Fitzroy. Merritt picks it up. The short kick in towards the centre. Watson can't gain possession. He's looking for the free kick. None forthcoming though and a bounce will take place. Watson appealing for the kick. By Rowan Sores retrieving the ball. The midway between the centre of the ground and centre wing members' side. Rindell taps it back, taken by Harris. Paris gets the hand pass. The kick towards half forward. McMahon up, couldn't take the mark. Bradbury does well. He's tackled, loses possession, and McMahon will take the kick. David McMahon has kicked many goals from further out than this. Bad luck for Peter Bradbury there, but a good tackle by David McMahon. And so David McMahon, who has kicked two goals too. McMahon, 40 metres out. And the Fitzroy veteran. He'll be saying to himself, let it go through. A kick from McMahon. It's on line. Will it make the distance? No, it's punched through by the Essendon defence. A little surprise, Sandy, that he went for, from that distance and didn't go for the torpedo punt. Yes, so one point goes on the board. The margin is now eight points. Fitzroy, 10-13. Essendon, a 9-11. Vanderhaar brings it back into play. To the half-back line. Parrish unable to complete the mark for Fitzroy. It will be an Essendon free kick. The ironical cheers go up for Merv Neagle to kick it over the centre. Donnell up high. centre of the ground, a low trajectory drop punt, Danaher, 
unable to complete the mark and the defence pounce upon that football. So a bounce to take place at centre-half forward. An interesting change. Side bottom is coming off the ground and this man, Grant Laurie, with that heavily bandaged left thigh, he's just testing it out a little, goes on. We're at centre-half forward, though, with the Bombers. Harris overruns it. He's been so courageous. Pushed back towards that half-back line. The handball comes the way of Williams. In trouble, out of trouble. A left foot kick in towards full forward. Danaher shepherded out on that occasion. And Glenn Coleman takes the mark at fullback. 15 metres. Sees Coleman kick long in towards the centre. And an easy mark taken by Merrick to the half-forward line. That's a good mark by Ezard. One of the smaller players on the ground. Been a dream find for the Bombers. Floating a kick towards full forward. And Bahaja, although in front, is having it taken away. There's another 15. So there have been 13 15-metre penalties against Essendon and five against Fitzroy to date. Grant Lowry has gone to full forward with Quinlan coming out to centre half forward, Zanny. Right, over the centre. Bruce, proving a very exciting player for Fitzroy. Still only eight points the difference to the half forward line. McMahon, well done. And the free kick will go the way of Essendon taken by Merv Ning. Has Merritt out wide. Looks to go a little more directly than that to the half-forward line. And reading it better than anyone was Williams at the back of the pack. 15 metres. Will we get used to them in towards the pocket? And a good mark taken in that position by Madden. Will be brought round Pretty acute angle, but he does have the opportunity of making the margin just two points. Distance is not a problem. Kicked one in the third term. And he's kicked that one. Here come the Bombers. The margin is two points on seventh big lead. for this great crowd here at the MCG. Certainly geared for a great finish. 10.13 to 10.11. Seven minutes have gone in the final term. We watch on replay. Darren Williams putting the ball forward. Simon Madden taking the nice mark and he eventually put through his second goal. So the bounce once again. The crowd really coming to life. A crowd of something like 75,000 people here to witness this knockout final. Harris pushes it out wide towards Francis for Fitzroy. Now they go down to the half-forward line. Wilson's loose there. He played on. Umpire Kevin Smith giving him the benefit of the doubt. Centering the football. Looking for Roos. Coming over the top. Won't be paid the football, but he plays on to Carlson, who can steady. Shoot in towards full forward. Bradley traps, Bradbury traps it beautifully and comes away well. Good work. Straight back towards Carlson who now has been joined by Folds and has taken out over the line, so a throw-in to take place. Throwing on the half-forward line for Fitzroy. Two points to margin. Fitzroy holding that slender two-point lead. Rendell with Merritt. Rendell gets the ball down. He was looking for Carlson. Free kick has gone the way of Fitzroy, and Leon Harris will take the kick. So Harris... Sides to the long kick. Vanderhaar in the front position, a lovely mark. Paul Vanderhaar looking for a 15 metre penalty and getting it. So Vanderhaar now, still just short of centre half back. Favours the drop punt in towards the centre. Watson couldn't take the one hander, knocked on there by Hinchin. The hand <laughs> pass comes from Hawker to Watson, on to Weston. Weston down towards Danaher in the pocket. Danaher leading Pert. Hooks the ball high towards the goal square. Madden and Coleman punched away. Madden tried to kick it. Ezard tries to kick it. Smothered. King puts it through. Essendon in front. Renee King kicks his second goal. And Essendon lead by four points. You could win.
win the spectacular Porsche 928S or one of 10 Pan American holidays by entering the Shell Lucky Lubricants draw. With any Shell oil change or Shell oil purchase, you could take off with one of these great prizes. Enter now at your participating Shell service station, but hurry. Australia's largest network of handy banks gives you banking when you want it. At Westpac, we're rolling our sleeves up. You've probably spent the odd winter Saturday watching the bouncing ball and some special spring Tuesdays having a small flutter and memory-filled summer afternoons dodging runaway beach balls and smoke-filled autumn Sundays raking the leaves and many breakfasts reading the age. All that means you're a Victorian. And that means your good taste has come alive in your own margarine. Polyunsaturated Melba margarine. So, here's a toast. It's football's greatest day, and it's produced some unforgettable moments. Now, for the first time, you can relive them all at home. Barry Breen's match-winning point in St Kilda's first premiership. Big Nick hitting the turf as the Tigers draw to the 73 flag. Carlton's miraculous comeback in 1970. And all the action from this year's Grand Final. The Great Grand Final. Available on video cassette from the VFL for only 79.50 plus postage. This is the plan. Kidnap the mother of the President of the United States. Hold her hostage on the Eiffel Tower until they pay $30 million ransom. That is the plan. The trick is to get off the tower. Alistair McLean's The Hostage Tower, Sunday night, 8.30, brought to you by Wiltshire. Here they go, Bahadur through, will it lift them to Donnell, who can get the handball away. He does, Weston, another long run towards King. Back they go to Weston, on the left foot, he snaps a goal, he's kicked it! Great goal by Paul Weston, and the Bombers have come alive in 83. Two quick goals, and they're starting to fire, and Fitzroy are done. That's what Paul Weston now playing at centre half back came right down the ground carried right through it was a great goal by Paul Weston 10 points the margin now held by Essendon 19 points is the lead held by Fitzroy during that third quarter but the Bombers have refused to give in. The big punch from Merritt. Francis took his eye off the ball so didn't gain possession Williams picks it up Goes back towards the centre and Roger Merritt. He gets the hand pass over the top to Hurd. Essendon in full flight as Hurd gets it to Bradbury. Over the top to Folds. Folds steadies. Puts the long kick over the half forward line. Up high, up and down before acceptances was Madden. The loose ball comes out now. Tapped on by Parrish. Madden comes in again. Coleman hooks the ball forward. Donnell tries to gain possession. Hinchin comes in. So too does Osborne the umpire decides it's time for a bounce. The bounce will take place on the Essendon half forward line. 11 minutes have gone in this final term. 10 points the lead held by Essendon. Madden gets the backhander and gives away a free kick as he was doing so. So Rendell will take the kick. Rendell of Fitzroy. The hand pass wide to Nettlefold. One bounce. Then the hand pass to Carlson. Quick hand pass from Carlson, looking for Wilson. Couldn't trap it the first time. Gets out of trouble. A hand pass, he tops one too high, and Wilson will take the free kick. So Wilson from the centre of the ground. Essendon leading by 10 points. After trailing at one stage by 19, to half forward, Quinlan. Even though it's super boot, he's too far out to score. Only played 12 minutes of this final term, so there's... Plenty of time left towards full forward. McMahon's in front. He's kicked two goals. And his great experience really has told down in the forward line today. Chance to cut the margin back to four points. The winner of this match to go on and meet North Melbourne in the preliminary final. David McMahon is deadly towards goal. He makes no exception this time. And Fitzroy, 11-13, trailing Essendon, 12-11 on Simmons, big lead. Once again, four points. The lead held by Essendon is on replay. We see Bernie Quinlan put the kick forward. The front position, David McMahon brings it down. And if ever you needed... A lead as to where you get from trying to take a mark, Sandy. It's in front. 
Four points. The lead held by Essendon. Merritt against Rendell. Merritt takes the ball out of the centre. Taken away from him by Nettlefold. The loose ball comes forward. Hinchin gets a push in the back. None, no free kick. And so the bounce will take place 20 metres closer to the Essendon goal than the centre circle. Big pack of players around the bounce. Rendell gets the tap this time. It favours Neagle. Neagle's kick towards half forward. Kink in the front position. It's punched away by Parrish. Knocked on again by Wilson. Bahaja comes out with it. He's tackled. The loose ball tapped on by Pert. Picked up by Williams. He loses possession. And he is penalised accordingly. It's too slow. And so the Fitzroy defence hanging on grimly. Osborne of Fitzroy with the kick. From the half-back line. Rendell saying go longer towards half forward. Carey up with the one hand to try and spoil. Play on will be the call. Ezard beaten for it by McMahon. And umpire Rowan Soares will come in for a bounce. A crowd of 81,090 people watching this game here at the MCG. Through comes Ezard. Steadies to the half forward line. Danaher spoiled. Waiting down, the opportunist Hawker sets up the handball to Watson. Another one back to Danaher. He's in trouble, out of trouble, threading and weaving. Now back to Watson, who kicks long in towards full forward. Madden will come over the top and see it thump through for one behind only. And so they creep just a little further ahead. A five-point break midway during this final term. It will be the final term for the year for one of these sides. Grant Laurie called back onto the ground despite injury kicks out looking for Rendell great mark over the top by Duckworth the umpire no he said he won't play that as a mark he'll have a bounce Billy's saying why wasn't it the crowd somewhat hushed at the moment Rendell who's worked tirelessly all day on the ball will have to do it again Fifteen and a half minutes gone. Rendell flicking it over the back, but it was pushed towards the half forward line for the Bombers. Bahaja got a lightning handball back towards King, thrown out towards Ezard. A high kick, gathering little distance, but who'll be first to the drop of it? A chance for Hawker. He was tripped. Holding the ball goes against him. So Fitzroy out of trouble again to Carlson on the half-back line. He loves to run Lee Carlson. He loves the conditions too. Over the head of Carey, but he recovers well to pounce on it with Roos. Throw it out towards Bradbury, who gets a hurried kick back towards the wing. The mark was dropped on that occasion by Hawker. It lets in Wilson. He scoots over the centre towards the half-forward line. A spoil by Vanderhaar. Who's going to be first to it? Now a chance for... Hawthorne of the uh, Essendon side once again to go forward. Up towards the half forward line goes Neagle's kick. Waiting down was Danaher. Gives it across to kick. He can steady with the handball. Here's another one to the Bombers. Frank Donnell shoots towards goal and puts it through. Back again to an 11 point break for the Bombers. 13 12 to Fitzroy's 11 13. It's good teamwork by Essendon there. There's uh, Merv Neagle gain possession there. Part of the 81,000 as a hand pass comes from Danaher. Kink, hand pass over the top. Good play by Danaher and Kink to see Frank Dunnell put the ball through. Centre bounce. Merritt gets the ball. Gains possession himself. It comes back towards Rendell. Hawker comes out with it. The left foot kick towards the half forward line. Over the top comes Pert. The big punch. Too high though. It's taken by Ezard. Ezard's kick out wide. Laurie and Madden. Madden taps it over the top. Great play by Madden as Terry Danaher goes towards goal and brings up goal number five. Five goals to the Essendon skipper and Essendon 96 to 79. 70. Sevens Big League is part of the Holden Premiership season. And Essendon going on to win the match by 23 points and thereby advance to the preliminary final. The Bombers far too good in the final term, kicking seven goals two to two goals two. 
The goal kickers for the match this afternoon for Fitzroy initially. Uh, their main goal kickers, McMahon, got three and Quinlan two. And for Essendon, the main goal kickers for the Bombers, Danaher five, Baharja three and two each to Kink and Madden. Statistics on the match. The kicks, very little in it. Only a margin of six in favour of Essendon. The mark, 63 to 56. The free kicks, uh, Fitzroy in favour there, 44 to 36. The handball, 73 to 53. A margin of 20 to Fitzroy. The hit outs, 30 to 51. Essendon very much in command there with Madden uh, doing very well around the ground and at the hit outs and the shots at goal, 31 to 34 in favour of the Bombers. And that's how they finished up at the MCG this afternoon. Well, Stephen Phillips went into the Essendon rooms after the game and he spoke. First of all, to a delighted top supporter in Andrew Peacock. Well, Frankie, best part of wedding presents a lot for Margaret and I. Uh, I had to leave her behind to come in here, naturally enough, Stephen. Yes, a great game. Did you ever feel any doubt? Uh, well, I'd have to momentarily when we were 19 points down, although I'd been very confident all week. They've been a hoodoo team for us, Fitzroy. They played it very hard and very well, but the fellas, I think, will go on and win the flag. Well, Mr Peacock joined in the celebrations, Coach Kevin Sheedy was more than happy with the way his players performed. Oh, yes, you know, we believe that, um, you know, good, strong football's what, what the game's about. And, uh, um, you know, we uh, were a goal down at half-time, but I felt that in the end, uh, you know, our... In the encouragement that I pursued with the boys to really work hard at getting the ball, and um, you know, really got us through in the end. Kevin, there was something of a scuffle at half time. What exactly happened? I'm not quite sure, uh, to be quite honest, Stephen. I know that one of our players was um, pushed or knocked uh, walking up the race, and you know, we just probably, I suppose, people around the Essendon camp defending it. Too. There were, of course, two reported players in the match. Gary Sidebottom, the Fitzroy centre half forward, was in a bit of trouble with the umpires and he'll front the tribunal on a striking charge on Monday, and the Bombers' strongman Ronnie Andrews was also reported, not on a striking charge, but on a charge of using uh, threatening language to field umpire Smith during the third quarter, and Scott Palmer will have details of those reports later on during Seven's Big League. Jack Edwards made his way to the Fitzroy dressing rooms after the game, and he spoke to a very disappointed coach, Robbie Walls. Two weeks in a row, Robert, the MCG, and two weeks, much the same result. Yes, Jack, very disappointing, very disappointing. Were you surprised by the vigour that Essendon used uh, right from the start of the game? They seemed to hit Fitzroy very hard. No. You weren't surprised at all? No, that's the way that they've played and, uh, you know, expected that it wouldn't stop today. Did you uh, think it took the toll on some of your smaller players because as the game wore on, they seemed to get, their legs seemed to be getting less and less? No, I don't think so, Jack. Um, I thought that we played, played ordinary football in the first half and yet we were still there third quarter we had our chances to break away and get a three or four goal lead 